everyone, Candy Zaru here. You guys answered my social media. I put on Instagram a little poll if you guys wanted to see the children's books that we are buying and collecting and searching for to fill our library with diverse, inclusive um, books that our daughters can identify with and books that have positive, normal representation for our children. And so I'm recording that video now. The first book up is Ava's Big Move. It's by Dr. Ebony Jade Hilton, and it's a really good book. Some of you know, some of you don't. My daughter's name is Ava, and so it was just a nice coincidence. Well, Baruch Hashem, he ordered it this way, that um, the book would be Ava's Big Move because, again, we, we, we did move recently, and our daughter's name is Ava, and the little girl actually kind of looks like our daughter, so it's really cute. It's one of her favorites. It's got great illustrations, and it was not expensive. I got it from Amazon, um, and it's, it's not expensive, so Ava's Big Move is one. Number two, Let's Bake. It is by Julia Lassa and Merv Terzi. Um, it's, again, common theme a brown child with the natural curly poofy hair. Um, it's a cute book. It's kind of gross, but it's a, it's a cute um, fictional story. And my girls, again, like this one. This is probably one of my personal favorites as well as my daughter's. This one is Yaffa and Fatima. Shalom Salam. And this book I really enjoy because it doesn't shy away from the religious differences um, as well as cultural differences. And it really highlights how you can be friends and you should be friends with your neighbors and with people around you who have a completely different belief system um, than your own and look and dress differently than you believe you should look and dress. Um, I also love that it, I mean like this page, it says Yaffa would read from her Siddur in the morning, Fatima would read from her Quran in the morning, Yaffa fasted on Yom Kippur, Fatima fasted during Ramadan. And so just, just stuff like that I think it's really important for kids to have. My girls love it because I do have a friend. Um, she is a Muslim and, you know, she wears full hijab, correct hijab, um, and I, more like the Jewish woman here, um, I do show my hair and I veil. And um, our modesty standards are a little bit different than Islamic modesty standards. And so my girls will see this and they'll kind of be like, oh, it's like you and, you know, miss uh, my friend's name. And I don't know, I just love that my girls, three and one year old, are already kind of putting the pieces together. So de definitely go get this one. It's not expensive either. I don't think any of the books that I'm going to show you are really expensive except for maybe one. So Next one is my one-year-old's favorite of the bunch. Um, it is Lola at the Library. This is by Anna McQuinn and Rosalind Beardshaw. Um, it's a cute little story about a little girl and her mommy and they go to story time on Tuesdays <laughs> and that's what we do so I really like it I also enjoy the illustrations that it has um, like this page it's got the mom and the daughter eating together she's got her head covered um, as well as I like the idea that they depict the mom um, most likely as a stay-at-home mother which typically you will not see um, black women depicted in any books as stay-at-home parents. So definitely go cop this one. Again, not expensive. Next one up, I really want my girls to like this book, but I think they're a little bit afraid of this lion right now. Um, again, it's got a black girl. She's got braids in her hair. She's even got the little, we used to call them bobos, <laughs> little bald Brett knocker things and bows at the end of her hair um, and it's again it's a super cute long story I like the story hopefully my girls will grow into really liking this book this one was a bit more expensive 
Um, however, I did get it from Barnes & Noble, so that could be why as well. Next is I Like Myself. My three-year-old can quote this book. Um, we read it a lot. We happen to have two copies of this. Um, and one thing that I like about all of these books and something that was done intentionally is that we did not buy our daughters any struggle narratives as we phrase them in our household. Um, we, we think that our daughters, it's really important for them to see themselves as princesses, normal little girls who go to school, astronauts, uh, whatever, people who just like themselves, etc. as opposed to always seeing themselves as a slave that got free and rose up and made it. And yes, those books are important. And yes, those narratives are important. However, we feel we want to set the foundation for positive representation outside of the constant struggle narrative. Rant done. So this book is really good. It does the whole liking yourself, being self-confident without getting into um, kind of a struggle narrative or getting into the more complex ideas about race, ethnicity, and hair texture. Okay. As you can see, I don't know where the actual book of this is. I'm kind of upset about it, but I have a three-year-old and one-year-old. What am I going to do? This is Mary Had a Little Glam. It is, oh, I love this book. Um, it's a cute little black girl who's again has the natural hair that's important for me personally because my daughters and I have natural hair and she's just a cute little girl who's like got her own style and she doesn't care very similar to my three-year-old and I think most three-year-olds and so I think it's really relatable and I'm going to find this book hopefully tonight in Mirza Hashem okay next up I don't love this book so much but it was important for me to keep it after I got it. Um, this one is called Am I Small? Mi Pa Maro. This is um, Fula or Fulani language. Um, if you have not watched my DNA ancestry videos, click the link up here or up there or wherever my dear husband decides to put the pop-up, click this, watch this video thing. Um, I am Fulani primarily and Yoruba primarily and so it was important for me to kind of learn the language and the culture and kind of try to bring that into my home. What the downside of this book is that I was, or maybe the downside of my expectations, I was expecting a black child because Fulani are African black people. Um, I don't think that was like a crazy expectation, but the little girl is very, very light, um, but her hair texture is the curly poofy hair. So she could just be a light skinned sister. I don't know. So it is what it is. I just think it's a little weird. I think the illustrators just didn't want to spend too much money, which I understand that. Um, but yeah, it's got everything in English and then it's got it in the Fula language. So. It's a good book, it's a cute book, but I think my expectations made me view it as like, eh, okay. And last but not least, we got this one, Swift Walker. Um, it's written by Verilyn Tarleton, and it's a space adventure. My three-year-old is into outer space and planets. I love the galaxy and the universe and learning about all of that, um, or at least our solar system. And it's a bit advanced for a three-year-old, but I feel like a four-year-old or a five-year-old really enjoy it because it's kind of like a textbook. It, it's, I mean, it, it teaches about like the asteroid belt and the outer planets and, you know, Uranus. They give you facts about it. And again, the, the child depicted here, he's a black child with an afro. Um, and he's not angry or doing anything violent or a slave. So for us, it's really important that we, you know, keep these books and these positive, I don't know if you guys can see this, representations of a little girl with curly poofy hair, nice little girl walking, the friends, you know, no one's scary. It's all good. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. 
Um, you guys asked for it. Hopefully I delivered something good. Like, comment, subscribe, and follow me on social media. All right, bye everyone.